Senator Whitehouse, Senator Grassley. Mr. Fonzone, uh, you can't have meaningful discussions about reauthorizing 702 when government reports and court opinions are heavily redacted and hidden from the public. Will you commit to declassifying information about the FISA abuses and procedures before the 702 reauthorization deadline? And if you can't say yes to that, why not? Yes, Senator, thank you. I think we, we have recently re released a FISC opinion and that released that declassified and um, a bunch of information. And the law already requires us to review FISC opinions for for classification and release them to the public. And we're committed to making more information public about se Section 702 to assist Congress and, and the public in its consideration of renewing this authority. Mr. Olson, I heard you say in your opening uh, statement about processes you're taking to make sure that uh, people that uh, are abused are, uh, or uh, people that abuse this process are going to be uh, held accountable. Uh, you heard about the 278,000 times that it was violated. What is the Justice Department doing to punish folks who have already abused FISA? Senator, thank you for that question. And again, compliance uh, it are, includes rules and procedures, but it only works if you have accountability. Um, and that's why the FBI has instituted a comprehensive approach to accountability for the agents and analysts who use FISA but abuse the rules. Um, it's on a spectrum for intentional misuse. Agents and analysts can be fired. In fact, one person was fired for wrongfully uh, violating the rules intentionally with respect to FISA. But the vast majority of the mistakes we've seen are not intentional, and the FBI has announced today that Deputy Director Bate talked about a three strikes approach of escalating penalties that include notes in a personnel file, loss of access to FISA data, um, and, and other measures, to including retraining, to ensure that uh, individuals are tracked over time if they're repeat offenders. Uh, so uh, there's, a, again, a range of, of, of repercussions in discipline, and I, and, and I know the deputy director and the director of the FBI take this very seriously. Okay. Mr. Abate, I'd like to have you describe for me the process and procedure that the FBI should normally follow when receiving criminal allegations from a trusted FBI source that an office holder engaged in bribery. For example, if the allegations include reference to evidence that would prove or disprove the bribery scheme, would standard procedure, uh, operating procedure require the FBI, FBI to seek out that evidence? Uh, Senator, in, in any instance where we re receive information, an allegation, uh, or a complaint, you know, we apply the standards on the Attorney General guidelines and our, uh, our DIOG uh, and determine whether the information received, the allegation, the complete, or the complaint uh, meets the threshold for the opening of an investigation. We consult appropriately uh, with our field office, with our program management elements at headquarters, with our Office of General Counsel, and then we take it from there based on the information, whether it meets the standard. So that's the investigation process that should have been followed with respect to the 1023. Apparently that process wasn't followed. For the sake of restoring credibility, the FBI must explain itself sooner rather than later. Mr. Olson, uh, this is my last question. The Washington Post reported your involvement in Mar-a-Lago raid. It wrote that, quote, FBI agents on the case worried that prosecutors were being overly aggressive. And further quote, Olson appealed to senior officials in FBI headquarters to push their agents to conduct the raid. Did you communicate with senior officials at FBI headquarters to push their agents to search Marowago? Senator, our, our solemn responsibility in every case is to follow the facts and the law and to do so without fear and favor or favor. We are absolutely committed to the impartial administration of justice and to upholding the rule of law, uh, which includes applying the law equally to everybody. Um, as I'm sure you can appreciate, uh, that matter is under the uh, auspices of the Office of the Special Counsel, is the um, and I'm not going to comment further is, on it. Is the Washington Post right or wrong? So that's a matter that's uh, pending, uh, and it's an ongoing matter, and it's being handled by the Office of the Special Counsel. So I'm sure you can understand that I'm not going to comment further. Okay. Thank you. I yield.